Super Smash Bros. Invented in 1999 by a man whose name I'm not sure of. The only time I've heard people refer to him is by angrily shouting the word Sakurai. And I don't speak Japanese, so I'm not sure what that means. Originally, Sakurai intended on making a game that was a spin-off of a different series he had worked on. This game involved a series of different colored balls fighting each other. But after being told no one wants to play a game about slapping balls together, and upon seeing the overwhelming success of Street Fighter Cross Tekken and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, Sakurai decided to have some crossover with other franchises in his game, thus spawning Super Smash Bros. When asked if he could put one of his ball creatures on the front cover, the Nintendo executive said yes, but only if it's mostly covered by the ESRB rating. The Smash Bros. series rose from humble beginnings as a ball mashing simulator to being one of the most popular franchises amongst young men who don't shower. So today, in celebration of the release of Smash Ultimate, we're going to take a deep, intricate look at this beloved series. As with any fighting game series, the only factor to consider when trying to determine how wait, good wait, these wait, games wait, are... Wait, 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 did I just call Smash a fighting game? That's a very hot take, and I would do well to prove that before I go any further. Um, okay, well, let's analyze other games that can for sure be considered fighting games, and see if Smash Bros. shares some defining traits with them. Starting off with Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear is anime. Is Smash anime? Well, it has characters from Fire Emblem, Final Fantasy, and Xenoblade, and each of those are pretty much anime, so yes. Street Fighter. 3D character models fighting on a 2D plane. Same with Smash. Looking good so far. Soul Calibur. This game has swords. Does Smash have swords? Yes. Tekken. There's a character named Yoshimitsu, and Smash has a character named Yoshi. Eh, yeah, that's, that's close enough. A Soul Calibur also has Yoshimitsu as well, so that's a double yes. So let's take a look at the total score. Anime. 3D on 2D, Swords, and Yoshi. Smash has a total score of 5 out of 4, meaning it is 125% a fighting game. So, as with any fighting game series, the only factor to consider when determining how good these games are is whether or not the cast of characters is cool. For the latest entry, Smash Ultimate is pulling a Mortal Kombat Armageddon and putting in every single character the series has to offer. Before we continue, I have two big problems with Smash Ultimate, and both of them are directly related to Armageddon. Number 1. Armageddon was kinda bad, and if one video game shares any characteristics with a bad video game, the odds of that one game being bad increase exponentially. Number 2. Meat is not in Smash Ultimate. Come on Sakurai, Armageddon was released on the Wii. All these characters who are part of a series based around brutally murdering people are fair game to put in your video game for children. And Meat is by far the best representative from the Mortal Kombat universe. Look at him! You put meat in your game, boom! Immediate 120% increase in Smash Ultimate sales. You hook every Mortal Kombat fan, and people who don't even know about MK would see meat on the front cover and say, well, god damn, I need to buy this game now to play as this skinless abomination. And his backstory fits in perfectly with the Smash lore. Meat is an unfinished experiment who escaped Shang Tsung's flesh pits. Before you ask, no. Flesh Pit is not a euphemism for vagina. There would be no better addition to the game than this unfinished abortion looking motherfucker, and I am deeply distraught by the fact that he is not a guest character in Smash Ultimate. I mean, his story is one everyone can relate to, feeling like you were left unfinished and without purpose, just roaming the world after narrowly escaping a Flesh Pit. Hold on, maybe Flesh Pit is a euphemism for vagina. Huh. I digress. Let's get back to... Um... Sorry, I'm really off script here. All right, the characters in Smash. First and foremost, you need a large selection of waifus to keep the weebs interested. Then you need some edgelords, you know, for the kids. Some furries to pander to the degenerates. And a handful of really good characters so the top 8 of every tournament is more or less the same. We can clearly see that Smash covers the broad range of characters needed. But let's dive a little deeper into the cast to get a better sense of the intricacies of the roster. Of course, you got the original ball boy who started everything off. The very well known Po 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 who's joined by other characters from his series, King DDD and Sir Ta Ta Ta. Then you got the mascot of Nintendo and his brothers, Mario, Mario MD, Luigi, Wario, and there's one who's missing for some reason. I mean, maybe technically Sponge is Vinny's IP and not Nintendo's, but I think they could work something out. You have about 28 Fire Emblem characters, which is fine, but please, can we get one who isn't a sword boy? Just one. Just give me Ephraim, or Hector, or Tiki. I'd even settle for Nino for fuck's sakes. Just somebody who doesn't use a sword. And if not that, then at least stop adding the same character over and over. Like, we started with Marth, right? Then we got Girl Marth, and now we have Boy Girl Marth as well. Fuck, I can't wait till they add Green Hair Boy Girl Marth next. Then on top of that, you've got Robin and Girl Robin, Corrin and Girl Corrin, and the repetition just continues beyond Fire Emblem. Samus, Girl Samus and Black Samus, Pit and Black Pit, 
Captain Falcon in his fursona Captain Falco, a horrendously racist caricature of an African-American man, a bunch of Pokemon and their slave master, and a fuckload of other polygons and textures. Now, there are two big differences between Smash and most other fighting games. The first is that unlike in other fighting games where the goal is to beat your opponent to death, in Smash you simply send your opponent falling back down to earth from what is assumed to be a very high platform accompanied with a rather violent explosion, leaving them to an unknown fate. The second is the fact that every entry in the series is still quite popular and has an active competitive scene. I mean, how many people do you know that still play Soul Calibur 3, or Tekken Tag 1, or Mortal Kombat Deception, or Street Fighter 2, any one of the eight? Correct. Zero people. But you know how many people still play Smash 64? Cause I don't, but I'm sure it's more than zero. Melee still draws huge numbers of people who hate you and think they're better than everyone else. Yeah, dude, you got me. I'm real jealous of you and the fact you have to lug around that 30-year-old 100-pound TV anytime you want to play your game competitively. Real sick, my man. Despite generally being in their mid-20s, competitive Melee players are the senior citizens of the Smash community, so it's understandable that they hold some resentment for the new things that keep popping up on their lawn. Brawl itself actually has zero players. You see, for Brawl's release, Nintendo reached out to Bethesda to create it for them. As usual, Bethesda released a game filled to the brim with bugs, so the community made a multitude of fan patches, which culminated with Project M, or its longer title, Project Make the Game Actually Playable. For fuck's sakes, how does Bethesda keep getting away with this? And Smash 4, which is set to be the first ever Smash game to die, as Smash Ultimate is just Smash 4 too. But who cares about any of this? No one buys fighting games for the competitive scene, or to play against friends or people online. Let's stop fucking around, and let's talk about the real appeal of each of these games. The single player story. Smash 64 sees a band of Nintendo characters undertake a treacherous journey consisting of completely disconnected fights, facing off against metal men, flesh giants, and clay targets, all to get to the big bad boy of the game. A scrapped Star Fox villain who's just a giant flying hand. Melee expands the lore of the Smash universe by introducing a second hand and revealing that the overarching story is about stopping a man's hands from causing him to fail No Nut November. Brawl. Smash at this point became the perfect space opera, with love and loss, espionage and betrayal, and a big glowy bad guy, and topping it off with more characters in the main cast than you could ever hope to care about. Smash 4. There is no single player story. Ultimate. And we're back with a gripping dramatic epic. Now I know, the game leaked in full like two weeks ago, but literally no one seemed to care as almost no one was talking about it. That's kind of concerning actually, maybe my MK Armageddon theory actually has some weight. Or maybe everyone who had a leaked copy was more concerned with learning about the new characters, or exploring the changes to the mechanics of the game, and they weren't all that concerned with the exploits of Genghis and Dingus over here. But god damn it, I am. Only time will tell what narrative tale is woven in the Smash Ultimate, but based on the one trailer I've seen, it looks like Genghis kills off the entire cast, leaving one yet unknown fighter to save the universe. I'm guessing this one fighter is going to be a highly anticipated character who was tragically skipped out on during the build-up towards the release of Ultimate. The Grinch. And now, I'd like to give a shout out to some of my patrons. Abstract, Atu, Andis, Ben, Boybabadinoy, Citrus L Thrust, Cole, Colonfire Sr., Cutright, Daniel, Dr. Nevermore, Magnum, Hank, Hooded Angel, Jack the Yak, Juice Goose, Michael, Mohammed, Lil Gimp, Nathan J, Nathan K, Nick F, Peek Me On Lan, Rain, Richie, Rodrigo, Samuel, Informed, Seba S. Bob, Sieg Fang, Snackawoo, Thomas, Verentorix, Weez, William, and Zachary. And now a word from some of these patrons. SW67791891497. Whenever I see British people mocking Western people, I remember that in a hundred years time they went from ruling half the world to living on an island the size of Michigan. Quote the Raven, nevermore. Seriously, how the hell did you take so long to figure that out, you fucking idiot? Main and Puff since 2001. Alright everyone, if you want to always win at Project M, you must master Squirtle. Richie is typing. Um, dude, I usually don't do this, but please cut out the Spanish flu segment because it is based off really, really wrong information. Only reason it's called the Spanish flu is because it did a lot of damage there. That's a lot of damage. Especially infecting the king, leading to a lot of press. The origin of this was in the US, and that also didn't mean it's a biological weapon, but it spread through the US. Theories claim it came from China, but there is no definite answer. The biological weapon theory is definitely wrong though, because this flu was already killing people before the apparent bombing of Madrid. Please don't spread misinformation, but um, seriously though, I have a feeling you didn't put that part in because it was supposed to be funny. Fuck you. Waluigi is not a suitable Smash character, and those asking for justice are wrong. 
Attention, members of Mango Nation. Mango is in great danger and he needs your help to defeat the evil hungry box on Dreamland. He needs a wombo combo and a couple USA chants to help him. He needs your credit card number, the three digits on the back, the expiration date, and your PPMD craygasms in the chat. But you gotta be quick to help him secure the epic victory before he starts drinking with Team Beer and busters out in 13th place. Why isn't Waluigi coming to Smash? Leave your guess in the comments below.